What's up guys? It is Georgia. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about ivermectin and the hysteria around this drug. Ivermectin has been a particular drug of interest in the prevention and treatment of COVID-19 and in a pandemic we want to make sure that the drugs that we are pushing on the internet are actually effective in the treatment and prevention of COVID-19. So given that there's so much noise about this drug, I thought that I'd look into it, do some digging, see where the shit all this hysteria came from. It seems to be blaringly obvious now, uh, after living in this pandemic for almost two years, that the spread of misinformation is just as virulent as COVID itself it seems. And it doesn't help when big influencers and Facebook groups and fucking seemingly reputable doctors back these kinds of treatments appearing to give a fuck about the community but really pushing these agendas that sort of end in money making goals. A particularly prominent public figure that has been in the headlines in conjunction with the use of this drug is none other than Joe Rogan. I'm not his biggest fan, but you know, I, I don't hate the guy either. I'm not a fan of most of his rhetoric. He does have some questionable guests on his shows. But that aside, Joe has currently had COVID. To quote him, he threw the kitchen sink at it and took just about every drug there was under the sun. Now, I have my own opinions about that in itself, but you know, we'll get into that after this intro. Real quick, hit the like button and the subscribe button if you want to join me on my commentary journey whatever the fuck this channel is about I don't know um, I'd love to have you so hit that subscribe button and let's do this So essentially ivermectin is a medication that has been used for years and years to treat parasite infections. It was discovered in the 1970s and developed in the 1980s and marketed to veterinary companies as an antiparasitic for animal parasite infestations. It proved itself to be very, very, very effective and it blew up around the world and was used in 46 countries to treat horses and cattle and sheep. By the late 1980s, ivermectin was the best selling vet medicine in the entire world. Soon after that it was presented to the World Health Organization for a trial to see if it was just as effective in humans and it turns out it was. It was the leading medication in the treatment of river blindness and it has been used for the treatment of malaria and in 2015 it won a Nobel Prize. So on the whole, for a parasitic infection, ivermectin is completely safe and effective to use. But the question remains, is it effective in the treatment of COVID-19, a viral infection? So as it stands, ivermectin is cheap and safe and you can get it prescribed by your doctor. From the outset, you can see how it could be snatched up by people who are desperate to treat their family members or to safeguard themselves prior to a vaccine being developed. So where does all of this fucking hysteria come from? From my digging, it seems to be that the initial push for ivermectin to be used in COVID patients comes from a group of doctors called the Frontline Critical Care Alliance that sort of assisted in the initial treatment and development of treatments for COVID-19 early in the pandemic before there was a vaccine. So one of these doctors on the Frontline Critical Care group is Dr. Pierre Corby and he kind of is the front runner for this ivermectin movement. He and a bunch of other doctors actually very effectively utilized corticosteroids to treat COVID in very sick patients. Without much evidence, they implemented corticosteroids and that's questionable in itself. But at the beginning of a pandemic with no other treatments available as yet, doctors were actively trying to find things that would help treat COVID and keep 
patients alive. So they implemented this corticosteroid treatment. It proved to be highly effective in reducing mortality rate. They implemented studies and gathered a body of evidence as they went. Ethically, this is questionable, but you know, it's extenuating circumstances. So on the back of this corticosteroid success, Dr. Corey decided that ivermectin had uh, a few small studies that had already been carried out on it and decided to add it to their trial treatments for COVID and presented these studies to a board and claimed it to be a wonder drug for the treatment of COVID with very little evidence to back up the claim. You will not die or you will die at much, much, much lower rates. Statistically significant, large magnitude results if you take ivermectin. It is proving to be a wonder drug. It's a bold statement to say the least. Any responsible doctor would say there's a small body of evidence that this might be effective and I would recommend that we possibly give it a try. Like not it's a wonder drug and it's going to work. Like that's very, very bold. As you can probably remember, hydroxychloroquine Quill, we're a quill. <laughs> oh shit. Hydroxychloroquill. Now I'm sure you can remember the hysteria around hydroxychloroquill, mainly due to Trump's crazy tweets, pushing the drug with the agenda to open up quickly. That of course fell on its ass when bigger studies came out and disproved its effectiveness against COVID. But you know, it didn't actually damage the community that much because it was a prescription drug. It was very hard to get easily without a prescription and doctors weren't actively prescribing hydroxychloroquine. However, with ivermectin, you can easily purchase it for cheap at animal feed stores and a Apparently, sales of ivermectin has skyrocketed. And many countries such as Peru, the Philippines, Latin America, Bolivia have taken this and run with it. The thing is with ivermectin, it's very easily accessible. It's cheap. And when there is doctors recommending it, when there's no vaccine available and people are desperate, people are going to buy it and take it. The FLCCC website recommends it and it looks reputable. Their website looks sort of legit, like to the average eye. And it's easy to understand how people could think mid pandemic, it's a reasonable thing to do for their family. The thing with science and the age of information is that the scientific process is that you conduct a study to test a hypothesis, to gather evidence, to see if your theory is correct. So it starts off as smaller studies and if the results are promising, then it leads to larger studies. The thing is the results of the smaller studies, the pre-studies are also published and you want the larger studies to build a larger body of evidence to lead to these conclusions. But all of the studies get published and people run with these smaller studies thinking that they're reputable studies when they're not, they're not even peer reviewed. They run with these studies while the scientists are still actively trying to figure out if the drug actually works. Some studies are published on dodgy websites without any peer review. No one's read the study and gone, yep, that looks right, that sounds right, that the statistics all add up and I think that's credible. And so any shady person can take that study and run with it and build up a media storm and build a movement a very dangerous movement, and then act like there's evidence to support them, which is what we're seeing today with ivermectin. The hydroxychloroquine mania was from a preprint. Trump started tweeting this preprint and it actually resulted in several people dying from taking it. So small preliminary studies by the FLCCC were then later pulled due to their lack of evidence. But by then the damage was done. People had hold of those studies and were running with it. So by March 2021, there was actually significant data to suggest that vaccines are highly effective against the prevention of catching COVID and the prevention of dying from COVID in hospital. Even when vaccines started to become available, Dr. Corey still put for ivermectin to be used as trials and didn't recommend any of the vaccines on their website, but only ivermectin, only the use of ivermectin. So it's sounding pretty shady. It, it sounds like he doesn't actually want a valid treatment for COVID. He wants the, the treatment that he initially suggested and wants to have that be successful and to be the fucking hero again, like with the corticosteroid situation. The issue is that corticosteroids now have a large body of evidence available 
to prove that they work with COVID, but there's nothing as yet to suggest that ivermectin is effective. You cannot find a study today as yet that shows that the use of ivermectin prevents catching COVID and prevents death from COVID. There is no such study available. The studies that are available show that there is no effect, that ivermectin has zero effect on COVID. So in June 2021, the first meta-analysis of ivermectin was released and it included this large study of 400 people that was conducted at Ben Ha University in Egypt. The author, Ahmed Al Jazeera, claimed that the study found a reduced mortality rate of 90% when ivermectin was used to treat COVID. Now, when this study that had such significant findings was rolled into this meta-analysis, it skewed the results to show that ivermectin was effective in the treatment of COVID. However, that was not the case. The majority of the smaller studies showed that ivermectin was not effective on the whole, but because this one study was large, it skewed the results in a positive direction and it was released and then influences took hold. It like spread like wildfire. It was later found out that this particular study was actually fraudulent and it was removed from all platforms. Despite epidemiologists thoroughly debunking this study, people are still using it to spread misinformation about the effectiveness of ivermectin. It had been downloaded 150,000 times, so that is the information age at its best. This had huge consequences, and by the end of June, it was being discussed on the Joe Rogan show in an emergency review with Dr. Corey himself and Brett Weinstein, the dream team. One of the things about ivermectin is it's been around so long, there's a generic version of it yep. available. Is that correct? That's a key feature of ivermectin. There's and, no money to be made off ivermectin. And no one can kind of control it. It's not It's not like a, any pharmaceutical company can manufacture it's out it. of patent and right. not, not high profit. Corey claims that the health bodies are deliberately ignoring ivermectin and promoting vaccines at the benefit of big pharma and the same sinister theys that control the World Health Organization and other health bodies. Joe Rogan amplifies this rhetoric by saying that the getting the vaccine as a young person is virtue signaling and that if he was a young person, he wouldn't get it. He later reneges on this statement saying it was stupid as fuck or some shit. Like, yes, Joe. But he's still on his podcast subtly spreading the misinformation, you know, pushing these ideas that, you know, oh, but what if this is the truth and the health bodies are actually lying to you? And, you know, what if ivermectin is effective and why aren't they pushing it? And what if there's some fucking conspiracy behind it all? You know, he got on and described his COVID experience and casually joked, oh, well, I'm still here. Mm -hmm. This is the this is the grand conspiracy, right? The grand right. conspiracy is that the pharmaceutical companies are all in cahoots to try to make anybody who takes this stuff look crazy. But what's crazy is look how better I got. Yeah. I got better pretty quick, bitch. Um, Joe, you had every fucking treatment under the sun. You not only took ivermectin, you also took fucking antibiotics and vitamin D and vitamin C and fucking monoclonal antibodies. Like, you are a wealthy person. Not everyone has access to all of those treatments. The fuck are you talking about? And yet you still sort of insinuate that ivermectin was the one that kept you healthy then you sort of go on about fucking being healthy and how that is the reason that you survived covid whilst you puff on your fucking cigar it makes a whole lot of sense joe the problem i have with joe is he associates himself with these fucking idiots these conspiracy theorists like weinstein's a clear racist he fucking had to resign from university lecturer because he refused to protest at the request of people of color in the university taking a day off in protest for black lives matter they wanted the white people to take a day off and he flat out refused and then he sued the university anyway brett and his wife run a channel called the dark horse channel and they actively promote ivermectin and discourage the use of vaccines and like it's just ludicrous like he subsequently got demonetized for spreading this anti-vax rhetoric and then he has a bitch and a whinge about it like that he's being silenced you know the whole free speech bullshit it's like oh 
And Joe has 11 fucking million people watching him. And, you know, having these types of people on the platform is spreading misinformation, like actively spreading misinformation. And they're just getting wealthy off of it. And people are fucking dying in their homes because they take this as gospel and don't get adequate treatment for COVID and instead trust in a horse paste. Like that's negligent homicide, spreading misinformation that people take and then it costs them their lives. Like the fuck? Leslie Lawrenston was a man who avidly followed Brett Weinstein's rhetoric and retweeted a lot of his tweets and he was found dead in his home by his family from COVID. It's really devastating and it has real effects. It has real consequences. Like if you take anything from this video, just do not trust people who make a living off monetizing their opinions. Like it's their opinion. It's not fact. It is not fact. They may have a fucking random pre-approved study to back up what the fuck they're saying. It doesn't mean it's truth. It doesn't mean it's substantial good evidence. One thing I do know is that we need to be very vigilant about what we're consuming and we need to really critically think about the information that we're receiving and what someone is presenting to us online and we need to compare that to other studies, other reputable studies, peer-reviewed studies, meta-analyses and a lot of consistent information from different resources. So currently, as it stands, ivermectin is not an effective treatment for COVID. It may not be harmful when taken in human doses, but people are buying it off the shelves, off the vet shelves, and they are taking dosages meant for animals. Like there have been people presenting to hospital with overdoses of ivermectin. It's being misused. And whilst there are prescriptions that you can get from doctors, the vast majority of poor and impoverished countries, they're not getting human doses. They're getting it from the vets. And it's just fucking sad. It's the fucking sad world we live in where there's no vaccines available to poor countries. And so they're desperate. The rich countries are self-serving first and foremost. So... It's not a surprise that it's huge in the poor and impoverished countries right now, but also in Australia and in America, it's fucking everywhere. And people are just like taking it and running with it. The hospitals and the health advice is not here to trick you. It's not here to lead you down a fucking rabbit hole of agendas and, you know, big pharma fucking conspiracies. It's here to treat you and to help you when you catch COVID-19 because as it stands and as the numbers are growing in Australia particularly, it's not a matter of if you catch COVID, it's a matter of when and the deciding factor of how well you'll go is whether you're vaccinated or not and that's the stark reality of it. Vaccines are safe. <laughs> They are also FDA approved. Pfizer is FDA approved now. So, I mean, please contact your health professionals if you have any questions about the treatment of COVID-19 because the best of the best are studying this and they are actively finding treatments and vaccines for COVID. And that is what you should be focusing on. World Health Organization, really good information and they're not behind some big pharma agenda. Ugh, it's exhausting horse paste of all things like <laughs> what next anyway i'm done rant over joe rogan is bullshit so is ivermectin don't take it go get your vaccine if you can get out of the echo chambers go out and see a gp and get some real advice and don't listen to the bullshit because there's a lot of it on the internet okay Cool. That's all from me for now. Leave a comment in the comments section about what you think about this whole ivermectin situation. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. Peace.